last tribute to a great king, a great and honored man, the father of an empire. The mile-long procession started near St. James's Palace while the gun carriage was yet at Westminster. Headed by household cavalry dismounted, foot guards, marines and dominion troops. And the music of the dead march, played by the Royal Air Force, filled the morning air. The gun carriage, drawn by men of the Royal Navy, came slowly through the gates at Westminster to begin its last long journey through a city so recently gay with jubilee bunting, now shrouded in purple and black and white. But here there was more than the outward show of homage. There was the true sorrow in the heart of a nation deeply grieving. Behind the gun carriage came the royal standard bearer, and behind the standard bearer, King Edward and his brothers. Then the Earl of Harwood in guardsman's bearskin cap, the King and Crown Prince of Norway, the Earl of Athlone, King Carol of Romania, King Christian of Denmark, Monsieur Lebrun of France in mourning dress, King Boris of Bulgaria, and the King of the Belgians, himself so sadly bereaved. Six kings, 22 princes, and three queens followed in the dignity of grief with the grand dukes and emirs of the world. For the last time, King George passed the shrine that was raised to the million who died for him. He died serving their memory. To the Queen, who clutched a handkerchief as she followed in her carriage, our thoughts reach out in silent sympathy and understanding. From St. James's, the cottage filed slowly into Piccadilly, towards the green of Hyde Park, now black with the scores of thousands who came to mourn. the last overwhelming minutes before King George left London. Packed thousands at Marble Arch and Edgware Road, lining the route to Paddington Station. <laughs> 